Sanctuary, welcome, and we're so glad that you're tuning in to the third week of this series, Quarantine Combos. Now, I just gotta say, it feels like day 147 of this quarantine already. I don't know about you, uh, but one of my highlights has just been tuning in every week and being a part of this online community. And I know it has for so many of you guys as well. So I just wanna encourage you, I don't know how long this is gonna last, but let's continue to grow in our faith. Let's continue to stay you know, connected and plugged in. Let's not fall back, let's continue to push ahead, all right? Now, I just got a few announcements for you real quick. Uh, first, we started a food drive um, at BlackRock, and so we started serving hot meals and giving away liquid gold, also known as uh, hand sanitizer, in the parking lot of the church. And it's just been going really well so far. We actually ran out of food at both sessions last week, so we're just really excited um, about that opportunity, and we're gonna continue to do that. And we just wanna say thank you for your giving, because that helps make that possible. So thank you so much. Oh um, man, it's changing lives. And if you'd like to give, just check out the link in the description below. Lastly, if you find yourself with a need, we want to help. We want to do whatever we can to help you. So email us at info at blackrock.org. Now, last announcement, but certainly not least, we want to highlight one of our frontline workers, Julia Campbell. She serves as a nurse in the NICU, and she's just been doing an amazing job. And so we wanna honor her and say thank you so much for all that you do, Julia. We really appreciate it. And a special shout out to all of our frontline heroes. Man, we're behind you and we wanna pray for you. So email us um, at sanctuary at blackrock.org or DM us on Instagram so that we can honor you and pray for you as well. Right now, let's pray and then we'll jump into it. God, we are just so thankful for you. We need you and we love you. I just pray that you would prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us tonight. And I pray that we would just let go of everything that's been stressing us out and everything that's been uh, causing us frustration, God, and we would just look to you. Let us be refreshed in your presence tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's stand up and worship together. Hey guys, before we go into worship, I just wanted to read something from Romans that uh, God kind of laid on my heart. Uh, Romans 2, it says, And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And I don't know, that's just something that we get to celebrate. Even though we might be going through some tough times right now, we get to celebrate in the hope um, that God has placed on each of our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So let's worship together and uh, yeah, let's sing it out. You have come and we have found life everlasting. Now alive to know your Never ending. You alone have made a way for us in your love. You are alive. I'm living in the light of my Savior, dancing in the arms of forever. I'm singing like I'm walking on water. You are. You have called us In your life Your light uncovered The world to see now You alone have made a way for us In your love You are life I'm living in the light of my Savior Dancing in the arms of forever Singing like I'm working on water. You are life, the light in me. I give my life to follow. Cause your love is all I want now. You are life. You are life, the light in me. Who are the world? To find your love, 
promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet And I never will forget That you've never failed me yet And I never will forget that you never fail me yet. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, <laughs> I'm Hannah. And I'm Rob. Welcome to our home. This is Quarantine Convo's week three. 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 Week three. There you have it, folks. May 3rd, it's week three. It's going to be amazing. We want to thank you for the first two weeks, mm-hmm. how you guys have been so encouraging to us, sending in your stories about how these things are impacting you. We want to, again, continue to encourage you guys to keep doing that for us. We had a couple of stories last week, unfortunately, of people who lost family members because of this terrible virus. First of all, we want to just say, man, we're with you and we're praying for you as a community. But there was one friend in particular who reached out who lost her grandfather um, this weekend, this past weekend, and um, was just sharing how she was hesitant to join in with quarantine combos this past week, but said that message on uh, where is God in my pain and lamenting in a healthy way could not have been more accurate for where I am. So um, she's been having healthy lament this week. And again, it's gonna come in uh, waves and ebbs and flows of uh, mourning the loss of a loved one. Um, But man, we're just so grateful uh, for you sharing your stories with us. Now this week, we have a different topic coming up. Um, This was an interesting question. So the question that you guys voted for for this week was differentiating between pride and confidence. And I just want to make a quick disclaimer. This is pretty easy to identify. Like it's pretty easy to identify when someone is being prideful versus when they're being confident. And the thing is, everybody around the person knows when they're doing that, but the person who is actually being prideful, or you know, if they're confident, they're they're probably self-aware. But when you're being prideful, you're not like always aware. Yeah, it's like bad breath. Everyone around you know around you knows except you. <laughs> That's a great one. Um So it's pretty easy to identify. It's a lot tougher to define. So we're going to do the best we can um, based off of experience and observation. And of course, as always, practical biblical examples of what this looks like um, in the Bible. So um, Hannah, maybe you can just start us off by saying, what are some examples of pride and confidence from what we see today? And specifically for you, um, what are some examples of pride and confidence that you see manifesting in women today? That is a good question. Um, I think it's pretty common for women to experience a whole range of pride. Um, I'd say that insecurity falls under the umbrella of pride and Mm. all of us have a tendency to be insecure. Um, But I, I think the way that I see it manifesting a lot in women, maybe more so, is this ability to compliment other women and be like, oh man, I love your dress. I hate mine. Or like, um, like man, she's so pretty. And then looking in the mirror and hating, your, hating yourself. Yeah, self-loathing, sure. Yeah. Um, or then the other extreme that I've seen and I know everybody watching has experienced whether somebody they know or yourself um, of nitpicking other women's beauty or possessions or whatever you're comparing um, and saying like finding the the faults in them because you need to feel better about your own inadequacies. Sure. Um, And it doesn't just have to be looks. It can very often be like for me for a long time I was insecure about my voice um, it could be lives, possessions, gifts, and talents, things like that. Hmm. I don't know. How do you see it in men? Yeah, I'd say for guys, it's a little bit easier to identify pretty quickly when a guy is prideful or confident. And so much of it has to do with um, a guy's 
ability um, to build others up. So what guys do often uh, is, you know, we'll joke around with each other, we'll bust each other's chops or whatever. And, you know, that's completely fine. But my thing is, when you are just doing that, when you are only able to bust other yeah. guys' chops, okay, yeah. yet you're unable to ever build them up, like you're unable to encourage other mm. men, uh, you feel uncomfortable doing that, or, oh, I just don't love him like that. It's like, no, that's that's not really loving and that that's probably a pride issue that hmm. you need to identify like that should be a red flag for you if you're unable to encourage another wow. guy you're prideful and insecure in yourself and you're needing to build yourself up by tearing others down i think that that's probably the primary way that hmm. i see guys being prideful and you know the opposite is true when guys are confident um yeah, busting each other's chops happens every now and again but they are so confident in who they are that they're able to um, speak into and encourage other guys into who they are becoming. Mm, um, yeah. So I think that that's one of the ways I see guys do that really well. I'd actually say the same for women, for confident women. Um, my friend Hope, she would always tell me orphans are jealous, but sisters celebrate. Yeah. And when we understand our identity, it's so much easier to be confident in who we are and to celebrate other women's successes and not compare our own successes to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. How about a moment of vulnerability? What is one personal example of pride and confidence? I'll start. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll throw myself under the bus first since this is a weightier question, an embarrassing one. Um, because I have many to go off of on <laughs> pride. I have some as recent as like probably yesterday um, <laughs> and this week um, that I can use to hang up um, when I've been prideful. I think that uh, it's no secret to those that know me that um, I'm competitive. I love to win. Uh, again, I think that competition is a good thing, but um, sometimes I could have unhealthy competition where I'm so focused on winning it out and um, what's really amazing is I actually get to work in a place where my coworkers are competitive as well. And for the mo for most of the time, it works in our benefit and works on our behalf that we're competitive because that's how the best ideas are bred. Um, but sometimes in prideful moments on my own, um, I have been so married to an idea that I had that I've shot down mm. the other great ideas of my coworkers right. or... Um, you know, I've been so focused on lifting up my idea and backing that that I'm not hearing what oh, my totally. coworkers are saying. And unfortunately, what happens when I do that in my prideful ways is that I, um, first of all, make my coworkers discouraged to maybe share good ideas in the right. future. But also, again, they could probably easily identify, all right, Rob's being a prideful jerk right now, and they're too kind to tell me most of the time. Um, and I, I pick up on it, you know, maybe a day later. <laughs> um, and hopefully apologize, but, um, man, maybe that's one way that I've been prideful. Yeah. Um, what about confident? Confidence, though, I I'd say I'm, something I'm growing in is my confidence in uh, communicator and, and preacher and just pastoring people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I recognize that right now in what we're doing, which we love what we're doing, um, but, you know, being placed in Connecticut for the time being right now and overseeing young adults, um, that this isn't our ultimate calling, but I can still thrive in what I'm doing right now. And what I mean by that is I'm so confident that this is what God has called me to for this season and for this time that, you know, maybe in pride and insecurity in previous years of my life where I've got up on a Sunday night or I've done things like this and I thought somebody else should be doing this. I'm terrible at this. I don't know if people are going to like this. I don't know if people are going to follow me, et cetera, where it's so focused on myself. But now I'm so confident that, man, you know what? God is the one that called me to this job. Like nobody else can do this right now but me because God called me to do this right now. You know what? I'm not going to worry about what other people do because other people didn't call me to this. God mm -hmm. called me to yeah. this. So I'm so That's confident good. in that, that again, it's not my, my final destination, but I'm so confident right. that I'm the guy for this right now. And that, you know what, and there are so many times where I've left platform worrying about the mistakes that I've made because um, I mess up at least once or twice every time I speak. It's hilarious. Um, and <laughs> I'm I used it's to, hilarious I, to It's hilarious now. <laughs> um, but I used to drive myself nuts on the drive home after mm, speaking at I an event that. or uh, speaking on a Sunday night. 
Um, and now it's just like, hey, you know what? Even when I do fail, every time I fail gives me an opportunity to learn how I'm going to win next time. Every mm. time I mess up is another opportunity for me to get back mm. up. So I, yeah. I think I'm becoming more confident in those things. How about you? Hmm. For both. For bo- Start with for, pride. Okay, for pride, um, I would say, actually, <laughs> funny enough, week one of quarantine convos you and i were You're preparing going <laughs> going there we were preparing our content and i i like to over prepare i think please tell them <laughs> if you ask me to give a history on the letter s i will give you the whole alphabet's history <laughs> anyway it's not the way rob does things he's very concise to the point his preparation style is actually really fascinating <laughs> and I brought him my really hard work that I had done, and he graciously, maybe, graciously. Uh, maybe not as gracious as you're making it out to be. I probably didn't do the best of job, but go ahead. He redirected me. I'll say that. Yeah, redirected. And said this is actually a better way to do it. And I got so defensive because all of that hard work that I had just put in, I felt like, oh, so it's garbage. <laughs> like that's how I felt Which deep not inside. True. There were great ideas. Well, thanks. They were great ideas, just not too focused many on. Yeah, yeah, too many good ideas that were taken away from what we were trying to achieve. Yeah, and more often than not, I think pride does root itself or the, um, displays itself as defensiveness in my life. Yeah. Um, and earlier I had mentioned, this is my confidence one. Earlier I had mentioned being insecure about my voice. And I can actually trace back to specific memories as a child mm. and thinking like my voice, not my and how my voice sounds but what my voice conveys my thoughts um i remember specific moments of feeling inadequate in my Hmm. voice and what i wanted to communicate and it wasn't until sophomore year of college that somebody looked at me and said god has given you a voice and one day he's going to give you a word that you cannot shut your mouth to Hmm. come on i affirm that I went home to my roommate, Hope, the one I was talking about earlier, and she affirmed that and said, um, when a queen speaks, people listen. Ooh, and let's go, queen. <laughs> speak that. Also, thank you, Hope. You are two for two today. <laughs> I love Hope. Yeah. Um, but that from that moment on, that very day, it was like a switch went off in my brain. That's a confidence piece for me yeah. now. I, I am confident in my voice because of people telling me, calling that out of me. How about what are some biblical examples or maybe a verse that comes to mind? Um, How about at least with pride? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you and I were talking earlier about Proverbs, uh, what was it, 16, 16, 18. 18. And I think that's the perfect one. It says, um, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Which pride comes before deception, er, destruction Destruction, always. Always. And it never wins out in the end um we just we know that for sure so um and the evil of pride is that it ignores wisdom wow and rejects the two greatest commandments to love god and love neighbor whoa so you can't do those things excellently and have pride i'm like you might want to like zoom shot of that i'm (laughs) pondering this in my mind like why all right (laughs) this is crazy okay keep going um and then one of the many ways that pride is evident is a haughty spirit which i have here is an attitude that communicates superiority over other people it's those people who think of themselves more highly than others um but what about you in all your years of experience studying my many my many years (laughs) i am like four months older than you so i can say <laughs> all my years of experience all your years oh my goodness oh, wise yoda well oh i don't know about that yet but um trying maybe someday i'm not green yet but we'll see i am short um, <laughs> your baby yoda yeah, baby yoda there we go um i think of two stories of kings <clears throat> that really compare and contrast is pride and confidence in second chronicles 26 There's a story about an innovative king who then became so prideful and fixed on building his own legacy, he ended up not really being remembered at all. Hmm. So there was this king named Uzziah, who you probably have never heard of for this reason. Um, And he started humble, but he ended up becoming really prideful. As a matter of fact, in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 16, it says that after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. Does that sound familiar? 
He was unfaithful to the Lord, his God. And you might be wondering, wow, well, how did he become prideful? And I identified a couple things from the story. Again, I would recommend reading this on your own. Um, But his name, Uzziah, meant God is my strength. But we see in this story that he began to believe that he was his own strength and power. Additionally, Mm -hmm. historians and theologians believe that Zechariah, who was his pastor and mentor, died a couple of years before his prideful downfall, and he never found a new pastor or mentor Boom. to speak into his life, which is really big. Actually, wow. Pastor Dan McCandless did a really good sermon, by the way, um, differentiating between Uzziah and David. It was amazing. He shared it on Men's Weekend, and I'm stealing his content right now. Thanks, Dan. The other is uh, 2 Samuel 11 is part of a story about one of the greatest kings ever who had one of the greatest moral failures ever but he Mm. was so confident in god's mercy and god's ability to build his legacy that he is still remembered today and i gave it away a moment ago it's king david who stories have been written about him movies have been done about david and we still like that is a pretty commonplace name in any (laughs) household today is, is david um and david started humble and he was able to stay humble. And the thing is, when he did have this huge moral failure, um, which, you know, just to let you in, if you don't, if you want a Spark Notes version of the story, he's a king, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, ends up sleeping with another man's wife, impregnates her, and then has that man murdered to cover up his mm. wrongdoings. Like, mm. yeah, serious, like shady stuff in here. And uh, David, when he's then confronted by, uh, a mentor or a pastor in his life, man, his his reaction, completely different than Uzziah's. Uzziah reacted in pride. David had immediate repentance. Mm-hmm. So Psalm 51 is actually penned by David immediately after he is convicted by his friend, Nathan. Um, and a couple things that it says in the Psalm, in one verse it says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And another point, it says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Yeah. So what David is saying here, what confidence does in, in the presence of God is, God, I messed up, but I am so confident in your saving power. I am so confident that the joy of the Lord is my strength that I'm not going to waste time trying to pick myself up. I'm going to let your loving kindness towards me wow. propel me forward. Because I think that pride also, it, it, it knocks you down, it keeps you down, and you're unable to pick yourself up when you have pride. So how did David stay humble? Well, he had the role of a king, but he still had the mind of a shepherd, which is where his humble beginnings derived was uh, in the fields tending sheep. He had wise counselors in his life uh-huh. that couldn't lied to him. I love that. And again, that's because David had a humble and teachable spirit, which was so amazing. Yeah. I think it might be helpful if we define some characteristics of both. What are characteristics of um, arrogance and what are, or pride and what are characteristics of confidence? Yeah. So I I say that first one right off the bat, motivation. Hmm. Motivation. Uh, Proverbs 16.2 says, People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. So truly only you and God know motivation behind stuff. But sometimes in prideful moments, only (laughs) God can really examine your motives because you're so uh, prideful in yourself that you're unable to Mm. even see your own intentions. And pride will do that sometimes. So maybe an example going back to the stories that you were sharing earlier on Instagram, I know that there have been times... uh, when I have posted things because I'm looking for a quick affirmation from people. I want them to like my stuff um, because I want to be affirmed by other people in what I'm doing. I want them to see I'm doing well. Um, And obviously that is completely rooted in pride. I'm looking for a quick affirmation from man rather than the patient affirmation of God that's always there. Um, Motivation. Man, there have been other times where I've posted on Instagram where I'm so confident in who I am in God that, you know, the likes don't really matter to me as much, but I want to be able to show people sometimes that like, man, I'm, I'm confident in who I am becoming. Yeah, I'm, I'm owning every part about me in my journey, in my story. Yeah, you know, I'm confident in the fact that I'm not the greatest photographer and I don't need to be uh, because my story still matters and my ugly selfies will still make it every now and again. <laughs> I love all of your selfies. <laughs> Man, they're, they're terrible. But, you know, then there are other times, too, where I'm so confident in who I am 
that it's like, you know what? I don't need to post this. Like, I don't need to post everything. The big yeah. Christian existential question of 2020 is, did your Bible study happen if you didn't post it on Instagram? Oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> I think that's, and you know, there are times with God where I'm like, yeah, I want to share it with people because I'm so confident in what my relationship is with God. I want to help people. But at the same time, there are other things where I'm like, yeah, I just want to keep this between God and me. And like, it's, it's okay if that's what ends up happening. I'd say that uh, another one, maybe, and I would love for you to jump in with this one, humility. Mm. Humility yeah. is, is a defining characteristic between pride and confidence. Now, uh, I think that false humility is a sense of pride. Um, Explain. So false humility is, you know, think I'm the worst. Um, it, it's thinking about yourself a whole lot. Um you know, one of the things that drives me nuts with Christians is when I try to give them a compliment and it's like, oh, well, glory to God, like, oh, glory to him, like, oh, and it's like, no, I get it, like, I like, I can give glory to God, but I'm complimenting you right now, like, great job, like, I, I see you, I value your dignity, and I think that sometimes when, um, you know, certain Christians and, and thinkers will even just be like, no, all glory to God, I'm an awful wretch, like, all these different things, and it's like, no, that is blasphemy of the human soul and dignity that God has given humans. Um, Ooh, he went there, folks. Yeah, I went he did there. It. I, I think that that is actually false humility in a wow. form of pride. Wow. Wow. Okay, so then true humility. True humility. Tell C- us. <laughs> C.S. Lewis said famously, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but of yourself less. Um, and it's... I want to say that again. Humility, humility is, is not thinking, not thinking less, less of yourself, of yourself but, but of yourself thinking of yourself less. Less, yes. Um, and it's the ability to boast about your resume, but not actually doing it. It's letting God be your PR firm. Like you were saying, there's yeah. sometimes that you don't have to post everything, every great accomplishment that you did on social media because you're confident and you're going to let God be your agent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that there's also, um, with that confidence and strengths and weaknesses, like, um, if, if you're prideful, you're unable to admit that you're wrong. Um, I, I like, yeah. again, you know, you mentioned a verse way earlier that pride comes before destruction. Well, yeah, like pride is unable to admit its wrong ways and a haughty spirit be- comes before a fall. And um, I think that just understanding I have strengths and weaknesses. Oh, yeah. I'm open about both, not just one or the other. And I'm comfortable with growing in each. This is an amazing thing about Jesus is that Jesus actually gives us the opportunity to own our mistakes and not let our mistakes own us. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Jesus gives us the opportunity to own our mistakes and not let our mistakes Boom. own us. So when you're confident, it's like, man, I'm enjoying the journey that I've been on so far. Yeah. I'm so pleased with where I'm at, but I'm also so committed to God's growth in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so good. And another one, if I can throw another one out yeah, there. Yeah, a couple more. I'd say honor is one of the biggest telltale signs of Absolutely. confidence versus pride. Pride always dishonors. It doesn't know how to honor. And like you were saying earlier, yeah. it is not comfortable encouraging. But conversely, confidence yeah. is the... you. Are, you honor so well, so excellently, and you actually look for opportunities yeah. to honor. Um I have this written here. Every person on every level should be seen the way God sees them worth dying for. Amazing. And I have a couple questions that can help. But I'm a question person. Yeah, you're Rob great knows. with questions. <laughs> I have a couple questions that can help us determine if we're an honoring person or not. Um, and it's, do I celebrate the people over me? Do I lift up the people under me? And do I lead so well that those who follow after me have a firm foundation that they do an even better job than I did? Mm. Those are some great questions to see, to get your heart check. Am I in an honoring place? Am I confident enough that I can honor the people above me, the people below me, and the people after me? Yeah, man, that's so good. And I think my last point that I'll have on pride and confidence is uh, growth and like the ability to grow pride stunts your growth oh, pride sure. is stagnant pride again comes before destruction haughtiness a haughty spirit which means arrogance before the fall 
it, this, this is a man look at where I am right now you might think that you're actually better than you actually are um and there's an inability to grow because you have this I have arrived mentality mm. well confidence wow. is movement in your growth it is I am arriving um, I haven't peaked. Mm. I'm confident with where I am right now, but man, there's still more for me to improve on. Wow. And both are contagious. Yeah, both are contagious. That's the thing. You were saying that Uzziah's mentor died and he never found a new one. And a light bulb went off for me of, man, that's a red flag. That's yeah. probably where he went wrong. Yep. I have here... Um, some only know arrogance because that's all your dad or your mom could show you. Um, you don't even know what confidence looks like because it hasn't been demonstrated for you. But similarly, confidence is contagious too. And so my challenge to us is let's get around people who do yeah. confidence Thank God for well. this community, by yeah. the way, where we, we have a lot of confident people. We do have a lot of great confident people. Yeah. yeah, and I'm encouraged by their confidence. And actually their confidence makes me want to be more honoring, more encouraging, have more movement in my growth, all of those things. Mm. Hannah, I love how we've had a practical step every week. Yeah. What's a practical step for this week? Yeah, <laughs> this one's good. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> Put your seatbelts on. They're on. Pride makes us unaware of blind spots that we can have within ourselves, And so a practical tool or exercise that you can do this week is to find somebody a friend or a family member that you trust that you've let speak into your life and ask them to show you if pride has affected your life at all in any way in all of the ways whatever they're comfortable with and then ask them what areas of confidence they see you thriving in and it may sting it yeah. may hurt and that's called pride it's detoxing <laughs> that's okay. from pride yeah it's like if you clean a wound it's gonna hurt because you're getting rid of all of the bacteria yeah, and things bad. this is what you're gonna do with pride it. in your life yeah disinfecting the pride in your life and remember don't get defensive and actually if the person that you're asking to do this doesn't want to do it oh i can't think of anything uh, <laughs> they're they either don't know you that well and you need to ask someone else <laughs> Or they know you really well, and maybe this should be a red flag that you are so prideful that you need to admit, hey, have I become too prideful or defensive for you to share my blind spots with yeah. me? And I'm saying that because I've had to be that person before where I've become so prideful and defensive in my past that people have been afraid to give me feedback that's going to help me grow because of my bad ways. Zach, our camera guy is looking at me right now, nodding his head. <laughs> Um, so there you go. Confirmed. Um, don't worry. Six feet apart. We're quarantining. It's all good. But lastly, we got some resources for you guys yeah, as we do, we do each and every week. So the book that I'm recommending this week is a book called Own the Moment by Carl Lentz. I think that this is also a man who, when you talk about guys with confidence, this man is the most confident man I know. Um, and specifically in his books, he has two chapters, chapter 16, being uncool has never been cooler. And chapter 17, you don't have to be good at everything. Uh, have been really impactful for me when it comes to leading in confidence and destroying pride. Yeah. A podcast that we have available for you is called The Comparison Trap. It's put out by Life Church. It's Sam Roberts, I believe, um, who gives this particular talk, and we'll have that available for you too. And lastly, short YouTube clip. It's less than eight minutes long. There's a YouTube clip called Fix the Leak by Pastor Stephen Furtick, another amazing, confident man of God. Um, and he talks about um, becoming unoffendable and fixing offense in your life. That's all we have for this week. Thanks again for joining us in week three of Quarantine Combos. We're going to turn over to our Zoom groups. We love you guys. And we'll see you soon. Love you guys. Hey, online church fam. Thank you so much for listening to this week's message. We hope that it encouraged you, inspired you, and was practical to where you are in your faith right now. If you're anything like me, you might be wondering, Rob, what is next? Well, good news for you. In our description, we have a whole what's next section. So hey, if you were listening to today's message, and you're like, I wanna place my faith in Jesus for the first time, rededicate my life, or I just have questions about it, we have a special link just for you to help guide you through some of those things. And we wanna celebrate together with you what it looks like to have a life eternally with Jesus. Hey, if you were listening to today and you were like, I wanna get better connected, 
into this community. We have a link for you as well that can get you connected to groups and other opportunities here. Or if you just wanna join in and you're like, hey, I wanna support what's going on here and join in with the spirit of generosity that this community holds, man, we have a link for you as well. So check out the what's next step. And if you can do me a favor, if this message helped you today, will you help me by sharing it with other people so we can continue to get the word out and the good news about Jesus all across our world. Thank you so much again. We love you and we'll see you next week.